Hello and welcome back audience, my name is Massive Brad and welcome back to another match day vlog. Now before we get into today's video, I just want to say a huge big thank you for love and support on the channel and usually guys I talk about a recap but you guys know about the match day vlogs. We've been to Manchester United, we've been to Manchester City and today is the 19th of February and it is Liverpool versus Bayern Munich in the Champions League. Now you might be looking now and you might be thinking Brad you're not focusing on us, you're looking all over the place. You can probably tell guys that I am driving usually I'm sat in my office and vlogging or it's at the you know at Anfield itself but I've decided to start I've just finished work it's just gone five o'clock we're on our way home and I'm gonna get back get myself changed and then get up to Anfield but yeah as usual guys it's a match day vlog I record me going there talk about the scores if anyone scores I'll try and get it on camera have a little chat with you guys after of course I do normally get a gift at these type of things and obviously we do know in the past that I've said I'll give one of you guys a scarf unfortunately Unfortunately, I completely forgot about it. So what we're going to do is, in today's episode, we're going to get another gift, hopefully, and I'm going to give that away and the scarf. And all you guys have to do is leave a comment down below. If you leave a comment, I'll be sure to put you in the draw. And it doesn't matter where you are in the world, you will have a chance at either winning a scarf and whatever the other gift is today. But basically, guys, we're on our way home. About 10 minutes till I get in, then I've got to get in. There should be, so if you're watching this, I do believe you'll watch it on the 20th of Feb, which is a Wednesday. Hopefully tonight, which is the 19th the Tuesday, there should have been an Ajax Road to Glory episode go up. I've sorted all that. I edited it this afternoon. And then hopefully that should go up tonight at 7 p.m. So that's an hour before Liverpool kick off against Bayern. At the start of these vlogs, I tend to talk about what I think the score is going to be. And for me, I think it's going to be quite close. I think it's probably going to be a 2-1 Liverpool. And I think Mane and I think Bobby Firmino are going to be the scorers for Liverpool. As for Bayern Munich, it's a difficult one. They've got a, a load of good players in there. I'm either going to go Serge Gnabry or Robert Lewandowski. I think either one of them are going to score that one goal. And hopefully we do beat them 2-1. But we've got to remember if they do score, we could do get in a clean sheet because, of course, it's the Champions League and away goals do help. But anyway, guys, I'm going to concentrate on the road now. I haven't been touching it for any... You know, I see some vloggers out there and they're holding the camera and stuff. And people say, if the police watch this, you're holding the camera. And they're holding the camera. It's balanced on my dashboard right now. But yeah, let's get home. I'll probably continue the vlog there. And then we'll get off to Anfield and hopefully bag our first win in the knockout stages of the Champions League. So, just arrived home now. Took me a little bit longer than usual. The traffic is just chaos. And especially when you live in a city like Liverpool. When it comes to rush hour, when everyone's leaving work at 5 o'clock. It's just absolutely mental. And there's a lot of road works going on at the moment. But, plan that. Also, you're probably seeing this as well. I'll try and maybe zoom in to get rid of it. It's just one of these Yankee Candle smelly things. But, plan is now, get in. Apply a little bit of aftershave. Get changed. Because obviously I'm still in my work gear. Get changed get up to Anfield, have the food, I'll be sure to leave all that in and do the famous recording the escalators as I go up to the top in the new stand. I'm going to try my best to get the goals. I discussed this in a Liverpool career mode when, when people were saying, Brad, you didn't catch all the goals this time. What was different to last time? When we faced off against... I think I went to the United, and I went to the City game first. When we faced off against City, I was constantly recording. It was the first time me doing an actual like vlog as such or a match day vlog. So I was recording everything, so it was dead easy to pick it up. Then after that, I went to another. I think it was another game, maybe two games between that game and the United game. And for me, like the seats are great, the food's great. Sometimes you just want to sit there and actually enjoy the experience. So. Always getting the camera out to a bit of a pain. Then the United game come around and it was a bit of a big one, so I got the camera out again. And then obviously, again, same scenario. I just want to enjoy it. But again, it's Champions League. I haven't done a Champions League match day vlog. So I thought we're against Bayern Munich, one of the biggest teams in Europe. I thought I'd best vlog this. But like I was saying, hopefully you guys can hear me okay as well. I'll have no idea till I'm editing this, but you position nicely right now just on my dashboard but i don't know if the speaker's going to pick me up obviously i'm just using my iphone the front facing camera hopefully it's nice and clear and uh yeah let's get changed let's apply some aftershave get ourselves freshened up and let's get off to anfield and hopefully i'm so hoping that liverpool do a job tonight but i am worried because there's word of bobby firmino being out with an illness there's word of van dyke not playing so there's 
The rumour right now is Matip and Fabinho playing at centre-back position. I don't like that when they've got the likes of Kingsley Coman, Serge Gnabry, Lewandowski coming forwards. And obviously we've got to get past the likes of Jerome Boateng, Matt Hummels. Very, very difficult game tonight. But it will show something, especially in this first game, if we turn up and beat them 2 or 3-0. That'll be absolutely unbelievable. But I've said, guys, I think it's going to be 2-1. 2-1 or 3-1 to Liverpool, I think. And I will probably put a bet on this because I tend to do that. And last time I did put a bet on 2-1 and we did win 2-1. So I think I may well put a bet on that. I do believe we played United and we beat them 2-1. I think Jesse Lingard scored. I think Shaqiri, maybe Bobby Firmino. But I did bet 2-1 and it did come through. So fingers crossed that happens tonight. But uh, yeah, again, guys, it's a vlog. I'm not used to doing these. I'm hoping as well. I'm going to get in now and check. But there should have been a video go up yesterday by the time you guys are seeing this, which is the match day, technically. It's always hard talking in the past and the future. Today is Tuesday. There should be a video going up in around an hour's time at 7 p.m. And then this should be going up on the Wednesday to so the following day. But we'll see how it goes. But as I say, guys, a little bit different doing a vlog now and again. So we'll see how it goes. I'm used to doing sitting in front of a computer, sitting in front of an Xbox and playing FIFA. A little bit different. So if I do seem a bit nervous or mess up on where to do apologise. But let's get in, get changed, freshen up and then get off to Anfield. Are you even a man if you do not have a draw like this full of aftershave? And this is my go-to every single day. Hugo Boss tonic, it is so nice. You've got the 1 million Privé for nighttime, Versace, Polo Red, another Versace. If you do not have a draw like this, you need to get a draw full of aftershave. Right, quick change. Now I've got a nice hoodie on, keep me nice and warm. Just got to grab my coat on the way out the door.
full time at Anfield. Nil nil Liverpool buy in. What a shame. It's going to take us going to Germany to get through to the next stages. Right guys, now you might be looking and thinking, Brad, you've changed your outfit again, you, uh, you're you now wearing the same as what you were wearing yesterday at the start of the vlog, you know, what's going on, you guys will see outside, it's pretty a light out now, and the last clip you've probably seen is me outside Anfield recording in pretty much darkness, it was about half ten last night, and by the time I actually got in, we were talking ten past eleven, maybe quarter past eleven at night, because obviously it was a Champions League game, so it was an eight o'clock kickoff. It was very late, I was tired, I had to get up the next day which is today for work and I didn't get the chance to actually do it this morning, I was going to get up and then get ready and then obviously finish the vlog this morning but I decided that I'd do it on my lunch so I'm back on my lunch now, about to start editing this video that you guys are watching and I realised I still haven't done the ending so what I'm planning to do is, and I'm going to do this going forwards I'm going to talk about what I thought was good amongst the team and whether I thought players done well or not. I'm also going to say a man of the match for their team and worst player of the match as well for our team. So what we're going to start with doing is, right, Liverpool, Alisson. Alisson at the start had a bit of a shaky game. If you guys watched it, you'll see there was a few times where he was getting the ball to him. He was holding it for too long. I felt like he was overconfident. Didn't feel like he had his best game. Now we're moving on to my worst player of the game, and that was Trent. And it shocks me to say this because Trent is normally an absolutely unbelievable player, but he was caught so many times out of position. He kept giving the ball away. He's a great player, don't get me wrong, but I just didn't feel like he had his strongest game. Fabinho and Matic were the two players that played at centre-back. Fabinho was tremendous. I cannot believe the fact that he played centre-mid CDM. Klopp's got him playing at centre-back, which is where he originally came from. That was his original position when he was younger. He absolutely smashed it for me. Matip on the other side is a big, big weak link. And this is why I'm hoping that when Klopp is watching this, he's realising that Liverpool need a new centre-back. For me, there's two positions we have to strengthen. And one of them is centre-back. And that is exactly why in the Liverpool cream mode that you guys watch, I strengthened the centre-back position. We have Van Dijk and Gomez, but then I still have Jonathan Tarr, I have Jimenez, I have Godin, I have other players that can play there because I don't want to fall back on the likes of Lovren and Matip. I'm sure they're both great players, but a team like Liverpool that's now challenging for the title, would Matip and Lovren get in Manchester City's team? Would they even get on the bench? No way. So for me, if we're a team that wants to challenge and win the likes of the Champions League and the Premier League, we need solid centre-backs that would easily get into United's team, City's team, Arsenal. would let you walk straight into their team, no problem. And for me, Matip and Lovren are not that. So I'm hoping after last night's performance, obviously you guys know it ended nil-nil. I did say that earlier on in the vlog. I'm glad that we kept a clean sheet, but I think that centre-back position is one that we definitely need to improve. Moving over to the left-back, Robertson, once again, there's not much I can say. Andy Robbo, tremendous player, always getting forwards and getting back, putting in some incredible tackles. Once again, easily one of the best players on the pitch. Moving into the midfield, a little bit of a different one, and for me it was more... I'm not used to seeing Henderson, Naby Keita, and also Gini Wijnaldum. But Gini Wijnaldum, again, had a tremendous game for me. He's the first player on the team sheet every week. If Gini Wijnaldum's not on that team sheet, I have no idea what's going on because he's unbelievable and he's only getting better and better. Naby Keita, same sort of thing. I love the fact that he gets the ball. He sees two or three players ahead and he thinks, instead of passing sideways like Henderson, instead of keeping the ball, I'm going to go through them. Quick feet, ticky-tacky. Next thing you know, he's gone past the three players. His next problem is, though, he's got to look up to pass or he's got to look up to shoot, and he does neither one of them. Another player comes at him, and he tends to lose the ball. I just think if he gets that polished, finished product where he just plays a ball through and gets an assist or he shoots himself and gets a goal, I honestly think he will be one of the best players at Liverpool right now. He's basically like a genie which nailed him but just doesn't have that pass or shot where his genie takes on a player or two, but then picks out a lovely pass over the top or something. Naby Keita right now doesn't look for that pass, and we need him linking up with Sadio Mane. And as we move into the front three, we had Sadio Mane, Bobby Firmino, and Mohamed Salah. Mane making great runs. Again, just no finished product. His shooting wasn't great. He had a few good chances, but he didn't put any of them in the back of the net. Bobby Firmino, I'm going to give him the doubt, to be honest, guys, because... It was announced yesterday around 3 o'clock that he had just trained after a couple of days of becoming ill. He had some sort of virus. So he wasn't fully fit. 
He still made great runs. I just find them so much in the midfield more than at a striker. And he's not scoring. And this is why the other position I think we need to improve on is a striker. I think we need to go out and buy an out-and-out -out striker. And then Bobby Firmino could move into the midfield with the others. And we could have a striker that's scoring goals. Because Bobby tends to drift back quite a lot. And that's why Klopp, I think, plays him at more of a centre-forward role. And then sometimes even plays Salah at the striker role. Because Bobby Firmino doesn't have the goals in him. Moving over to Mohamed Salah. Again, it was a quiet night for him. Making great runs, great passing. Little flicks here and there to Bobby and uh, Sadio Mane. But no finished product. No decent shot. No challenging the keeper. Whereas on the flip side, Bayern was so comfortable at the back. There were so many times where we were pressing them. But we, we just weren't pressing enough. We didn't tighten in. We didn't get the ball. We didn't have enough shots. Moving over to Bayern's team. So for me, man of the match for Liverpool yesterday has got to go to Gino Wijnaldum because he's absolutely tremendous. And worst player of the match has got to go to Trent. I just thought he had an absolute nightmare of a game. And there was a part in it where he switched Robertson and Trent because I think Trent had, I want to say it was Kingsley Coman over on that left side and he just couldn't handle him, constantly getting in behind. And Robertson had enough to do as well because he had Serge Gnabry, the ex-Arsenal man, on his side. So they both had a difficult game. Robertson just seemed to look a lot stronger than Trent. Trent is only just coming back from injury, so maybe that's why, but quite out of position so many times. So he is my worst player in Liverpool yesterday. And if it wasn't him, it was going to be Matip, because again, Matip put a few good tackles in, but he's just not a world-class centre-back, and that's exactly what I think we need. We need a centre-back that's world-class alongside Van Dijk and Gomez, and we also need an out-and-out -out striker that's going to score 20-plus a season, no problem. And Bobby Firmino used to be that, but I think we've been playing this new position of a little bit deeper, more of a centre-forward, more of a central attacking midfielder. He's not going to score as many goals as we would like. Flipping onto the other side of Bayern Munich. Now, it's a difficult one to think of because they had some good players and they had some bad players. For me, the worst player has got to be Robert Lewandowski and the reason for that is because he's out and out supposedly one of the best strikers in Europe and we didn't play well at the back the keeper and our defenders we didn't have a great game but Robert Lewandowski still didn't manage to score I don't even think he had a shot whereas Coman Kingsley Coman and Serge Gnabry were having shots Lewandowski had a quiet quiet game and considering he's meant to be one of the best strikers in Europe it certainly didn't look like that from where I was sitting. So I think he is probably the worst player for me within that team. And I would say the best player has either got to go to Thiago Alcantara or Kingsley Coman. And I'll tell you what, Kingsley Coman is coming through the ranks, guys. And he honestly will be one of the best players one day. He's so fast, so quick with the ball, so skillful. He will become very good. And I can see a Premier League team picking up the likes of United or City. They will one day buy him. I have no doubt. So that is what I'm going to do in these match day vlogs from now on. When I get back home, I'm going to talk about the squad that we put out. I'm going to say about who I thought played well, what I thought was wrong. And then I'm also going to pick a best player and a worst player from our team, Liverpool. And also a best player and worst team, a worst player from their team. Moving on, guys. I always do this. We get gifts. This is what happens every time we go. We obviously get a nice little book here with stuff in. I always forget what it's called. I always call it an annual, but it's called a program. There we go. The official Liverpool match day program. You can see there the Liverpool program. Got two of them, so I can put that down here. I've probably showed this in the video at some point as well, but you can see all, all the players there on the back. That's not the lineup. That's every player that plays for Liverpool. And if we put them down, we come into the bag, we have this. Now, the last two times I've gone, which was to City and United, they're the ones that have recorded, we got a scarf both times. But this time round, we have something a little bit different. Now, I've already opened this, and unfortunately, guys, I'm not going to be able to give this away, and I will explain why now. If we open this up, so we've got Charger. Now, you guys may well have guessed what this is, but it's, in fact, an LFC. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. got the light on it now. Power bank. Now, I would happily give these away, and I've said at the start of this video, I'm going to be giving away the scarf. So if you want the scarf, write down below a comment and use hashtag LiverpoolScarf. If you use that hashtag, I will, in the next 
It's going to have to be a Liverpool career mode episode. I'm going to announce the scarf. Or I might just do a quick one minute video announcing who's won the scarf. I'll put everyone that leaves a comment with the hashtag Liverpool scarf. I'll put in the computer for a random generator or a random picker. It'll pick someone and then I'll do a quick maybe minute video. Just do a vlog like this showing you guys this is who's won it. You know, get in touch via email or Twitter or Instagram or whatever way. And then I'll send the scarf out to you. I would love to send one of you guys out. A LFC power bank because this is really cool. I think it holds up to 40 hours charge. I think it's got a light on it. Um, you charge it at the bottom. You guys probably know what a power bank is. And for you that don't know what a power bank is, instead of charging your phone in the wall or in a computer all the time, you charge this up to full battery power. So you charge it to 100%. And this will normally charge your phone if you're out and about or in the wilderness or in the middle of nowhere. It will normally charge it three or four times with 40 hours um battery life so it's pretty handy to have but on the flip side of this because it's a battery batteries are a pain now if i was sending it to someone in the uk it's not too bad but i know a lot of you guys are from all over the world so it makes it very difficult for me to send it out because as soon as they ask what is it and i say a battery and they know that it's got chemicals in it might have battery acid or anything like that Suddenly it's like, well, we can't really be letting you send this in case it blows up or it leaks or anything like that. So unfortunately, guys, this time around, I'm not going to be able to send. And I did get two of them. So I could have sent one of you guys one. But unfortunately, as I say, with it being a battery power bank, I'm not going to be able to send it out. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to send... The latest program out, which is the Bayern one, I'm going to send a program from the United game, I'm going to send a program from the City game, and also a Liverpool scarf to one of you guys. And I know you've all done this in the past and you've wrote, you know, uh, hashtag Liverpool scarf. I need to do it again just so I have them all. Okay, so if you want that scarf and three programs, if you get the programs and you don't really want them, you can say that to me if you just want to stick them in the bin. If you're not keen on having them, that's completely fine. I'll just send you out the scarf. But it's just a little something to give back to you guys. So you've got a Liverpool scarf, which is a present from Anfield. And it's a, it, it's a special present that you can't buy in the shops. It's not a normal Liverpool scarf. It's very limited edition. Same as like that power bank. It's very limited edition. All these gifts that you get every time you go are limited edition gifts. But guys, basically that is all I wanted to say. I wanted to talk about the score. Nil nil is not great. We're now going to have to go to Bayern Munich Stadium. We're going to have to go to Germany. The good thing is, though, is if we get a goal, because it's an away goal, they're going to need two. So if we go out there and get a goal early on, they could be in trouble because they're going to need two. I'm happy that we kept a clean sheet considering the team we put out because it wasn't our strongest centre-backs. And I think that is everything covered. The only other thing I can say, guys, is apologies for not ending this the night before. But at least I've done it now. I've got it out the way. We've ended the vlog. And now I can edit it and put it into the computer and sort it out. But that is going to do it for today's video, guys. If you have enjoyed it, please do give it a big thumbs up for me. Don't forget to drop your comments down below. If you're new around here, click that subscribe button. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and family. And I've been Massive Brad. Peace out.